Right, okay, well, uh, here I am down in West Sussex or East Sussex? West. West Sussex. We're uh, talking to John Folly, who uh, back in 1969 was uh, Great Britain's last world champion uh, in Mar del Plata, Argentina. Uh, but we'll talk a bit more about that later. So just to kick off then, John, just to, I'm interested because I know you, you've been around a bit and by that I mean geographically, obviously. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know it's it shows. So, uh, no, so uh, just in so, where and when were you born? In um, the July the third, nineteen forty-two, right. in Oxford. In Oxford. Yeah. Oh, didn't I... In Oxford University. Oh really? I didn't go to university. Only only to only to be born. Oh really? <laughs> I, I didn't know you came from. Yeah, it was because my mother because it, during the war they they. Um, they, they took all the expected mothers out of London. Ah, of course. And so we we went from uh, London to Oxford. Oh, so you, so your family was was from London originally. Yes. Then? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm a Londoner. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So you still although you were born in Oxford, you still class yourself as a as a yeah, Londoner. London. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I was only there to be born. Yeah. Right. So so how did you so from Oxford then? So so after the war, I presume you went back to the family and that then. So yeah. How did you get into skating? Um. It was a friend of mine called Don Brewer. His sister was uh, one of the Falcons who was, um, they were the original skating club at Brixton. Right. And so he, we went uh, uh, from about 12 years old in the school holidays and we started on Jacko skates and uh, it progressed from um, uh, rubber wheels to, uh, this was at Brixton, to um, then I bought my first pair of skates I bought from uh, East Lane, which was a, a marketplace in London. And then um, we then joined the club, South London, and uh, I'd only been about 14, I expect, 13, 14. And then we, um, yeah, it was, it was a case of getting more interested all the time. You know, you, you started, to, started to get faster on the track and uh, you then wanted to join the club because you saw the fast boys were in the club and then um, you progressed to junior, jun in the juniors, the, the championships in, jun in the juniors and then into the seniors and uh, it, it had changed from the Falcons to South London. The, right. the club was originally the Falcons but became South London and um, yeah that went that went on for a number of years and we we then were um we travelled as a club to different rinks to um Alexander Palace, Birmingham, Leicester. Yeah. Um Who was coaching the club at that time then? Because it had been well, a Johnny Ellis Leicester. was the Johnny Ellis. Yeah, he was he, he was really the, the mainstay of the club. He he was the he, he used to do all the um book work and all the uh, Entries for the for the racing and we did would do the training as well. So in so let me get this right. So in, in 1962 you'd have been 20. Is that right? That's 62. Yeah. Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. 20. Yeah. So 20. So 1962 and I know I know from records that in 1962 South London won the what is now the British Championship relay, the the, oh, okay. the inter club relay. Yeah. Uh, and in that team I, I see the names Folly, Sharman, Bill Sharman, Ron Hawks. Uh, and Ellis, yes. so presumably Ellis, uh, that's the Johnny Ellis. That's yeah. the Johnny Ellis, yeah. Right, in, in yeah. 62. That was his uh, uh, claim to fame. Oh, that, right. made, that made his uh, era in skating, the fact that he won that, that trophy. It was won in uh, Brixton. Right. Because Brixton was a... Um, most, of the most of the tracks are oval, mm. but Brixton was a square. So uh, you'd, you'd, skate, you'd skate all the way around Brixton. Because there was a lot of world records set on Brixton. Yeah. People like, uh, I think, Les Woodley yeah. set some, yeah, I think, yeah. even Good Child, I think, and, and I know Pat Barnett, and, and Pat, Pat Barnett still holds yeah. a 5,000 metre track record set on, on Brixton, yeah. In, yeah, 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 from the 60s. I placed for a lot of that. Oh, really, yeah? yeah. Uh, 902. <laughs> that's a memory from memory. Oh, was it? Yeah, that's oh, right. a 5k, yeah. There you go. There you go. So, but, um, yeah, it was a fast track. Yeah. So why did you change from South London to Palace in, in the late 60s? Because uh, Brixton closed. So the rink closed? Yeah, so. they sold it to um, a um, corporate business and uh, I think it became a carpet warehouse. Ah, I see. 
It's probably because they, uh, I don't know, I don't know the, the uh, financial reasons, but obviously they must have been losing money and they, in the end mm. they sold out. The rink is still there. Is it still there? Yeah, okay. but it's still a carpet warehouse. <laughs> well, I say, that, I say it's still there. The last time we were in Brixton it was still there, which wasn't that, it was only a couple of years ago. Okay. Mm. Oh, I wonder whether the, the floor is still underneath. Yeah, well, it must yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. You well, wouldn't take it up, would you? Well, if ever there's a resurgence, all you've got to do is you know, rip, rip yeah. the carpet up, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, I, I know um, in in 1968, mm. uh, I, I think I'm right in saying it, you won your first British title, uh, the one mile that leads in 68. But... I know we, we briefly spoke about this. You you say in in sixty four, yeah. The uh, is it the one mile? Was it the one mile then? Was yeah. it against Les Woodley? And yeah. I know Les Woodley in the record box is is down as having won the sixty four mile champ. But you got a different take on that. I, I'm, uh, yeah, that's true. Yes. Well, I've got a letter from Les, and uh, uh, I couldn't I couldn't actually lay my hands on it now. But it's uh, a letter from Les. He he, he admits he said that in. Um, I think it was uh, 59 when Lippiot won it mm. at Herne Bay that he'd actually won it that, that, that particular time and he said it was the same for in 64 when we were racing that I'd actually beaten him at Alexander Palace but Henry Crystal gave him, gave, they gave the uh, uh, a decision to, to Les. So you were, so I think, yeah, because that would have been your first medal anyway. Uh, that was the five mile though, was it? No, it was, was one mile. mile. It was a one mile, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was. Uh, I can remember. I can remember the race. It was. Uh, I can remember the race quite, quite vividly. But, really. But Les, uh, uh, yeah, it was. He sent the letter saying that he'd it, that, that I'd actually won the I'd actually won the race, although they gave it to him. And did you know you'd won the race? Did you know, well, or did not, you think I was? Uh, um, at the time, you don't. You, you think, well, did I or didn't I? Uh -huh. I don't know. I, ex I, I um, accept the decision that the judges made. But it's only in retrospect when you, uh, that you, 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 you think, hang on a minute. Yeah. Know, maybe there was a... Um, a is it a sore point? Do you, is it a sore point or is it... Uh, a... No, not really, no. no. It, was, it was something... It wasn't until Les said yeah. it to me that it actually... It, it, that's, that it's uh, it came home to me that, that oh maybe it it's only subsequent to that because at the time you're quite you're young and you're just racing and you and it's it doesn't matter to you so you you, you can you're just racing for the for the racing sake and you uh, you get on with it uh, you they make decisions and you you get disqualified or you win or, you, or it's it's just the way the race goes and you accept it it's only in retrospect that you you, you say, well, maybe that wasn't quite right, or maybe mm. that was, that's not quite right, and, and, and then you disagree with things. Well, I, I, I've got you down as having won seven British titles. Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Well, this is what, this is what I've got. I've got, mm. in 68, you won the one mile and the five mile, um, yeah. the one mile at Leeds and the five mile at the Palace. In okay. 69, you retained the mile uh, mm. at the Palace. 70, the half mile, you won the half mile right. at the Palace. Then in 71, was really you won all three titles. In them days, there was only three right. titles to win. It was the half, the one and the five mile. Yeah, okay. But at 71 was the first time they changed it to metric distances. And I believe you won, the half mile became the 800 metres, which you won on Birmingham, the Mecca. Okay. Um, the 1500 metres at the Palace and the 8,000 metres uh, at the Palace, which was obviously the five mile. Right. So seven British championships, five at the Palace, but and then you got these in the Mecca. But do you remember any of them? Do you remember winning any British titles? No, the, um, no, not 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 really. Strangely enough, I I, I remember more the the odd ones that I didn't win, mm. that, that more than the ones that I did win, um, which I perhaps should have uh, odd ones that I should have won that. Um, that that, are, um, that stick in my mind more than the ones I actually won. I, I do remember I won all uh, um, the three in one year. I remember that. Yeah. Um, uh, it was probably coming towards the end of my um, skating, and I yeah. was I was trying to win the, the things at that time. Right. Prior to that, I, I 
always um, was interested in the, winning the five. That was always, uh, and um, for the inv invitation five, I think um, I think I may have won it about four or five times. Mm. But the um, for the actual five championship, mm. because of nerves, because of um, not not accepting um, responsibility of, uh, out in the race, I would uh, um, I, I didn't win it. And it was that those times that I should have won the five that I remember. Right. And there was two particular times I remember losing out on the right. five. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Which wasn't. Which was. Uh, they 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 are more. Uh, not they're not relevant to me, but they are they are relevant because I remember them. Yeah. You know, more than I do actually winning in the five. Right. Okay. Mm. Well, I I said when when I was just before. I did this obviously I was looking through some of the record books yeah. and, and some of like there, there was a couple of up and coming youngsters then McGuff and Fry mm -hmm. um, and I know McGuff won the five mile in in 66 uh, and Fry the uh, the half mile in 67 being the, these guys are sort of 18 19 if you like you know um, young, mm. I would say for young upstarts but I didn't know whether I didn't know McGough won it then. Yeah, his first title was in 66, yeah. Because yeah. uh, I said, when I, yeah, because I, I, my, one of my questions was going to be, I think you've sort of answered it around that sort of way, mm. is that, you know, how did you feel about young upstarts being British oh, champion before before you, who was really cool, oh, right. quite an established skater, yeah. really, you know, by then, you yeah. you know, you, you was Johnny Fire, you know. Yes. I mean, but... Yeah, it, true. No, I, I didn't, I, I wouldn't, if you'd asked me, yeah. uh, did McGough win... Um, in 60, uh, 67, yeah, 66, 66 rather. I I wouldn't have known that. Right. I, so that it wasn't something that I no. that I remember. The, the only the person I remember losing out to was uh, Mickey Driver. Oh right, okay, he, yeah, he yeah, won he it, won. Mickey yeah, did, Driver, yeah. and yeah. because that year, uh, one year, um, uh, Danny Kelly was leading. Yeah. And I was in second place, and I. I took Danny Kelly and fell over with, um, uh, I, I can't remember how many, yeah, a few laps yeah, to go, yeah. and fell over passing Danny, yeah. and uh, got up and finished, uh, I think I finished third, yeah. um, but Danny was disqualified, yeah. and I didn't know, and t when I came off, they said you shouldn't have passed him, because he was, he he was disqualified, disqualified in the race, anyway. yeah. so, but that, you don't know that when you're out there racing. Yeah, of course, that's and then, right. And yeah. Mickey Driver came through and won it, and I, I, I must have got a medal that time. Yeah. I don't really remember, but I, 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 I can recall that race. I, it's funny because I know yeah. when I, I, mean, I, I spoke remember to... The, I can't remember winning the five. No, oh really, yeah. No, no well, I, I know I spoke to Danny Kelly all years ago now, and he, mm. he always tells me, I think the fact that they disqualified him in the five more, I think, he felt a bit. Uh, yeah. It was unjust, and yeah. and I, I know it, I think they disqualified a couple of times in the five where he yeah. crossed the line first, and yeah. you know, and disqualified him. And I think that was one of the reasons why he he, he called it up a day yeah. in the yeah. days. But, uh, yeah. but that's, that's you know. That's yeah, we're time. we're all individuals, and that's we right. have different reasons for doing things. But they, what was strange in those days, and what was uh, um, unusual at the at the championships. They all the officials used to turn up in dinner jackets. Um, yeah, white, I see the photos. White, white uh, shirts, you know, black yeah. suits and uh, bow ties. Yeah, <laughs> so I see they the all photos. Used to, they used to turn up like that. So was there a was there a race that you remember where you suddenly felt like you'd come of age? I mean, because. I know when I was skating, I know, like I was always, mm. yeah, you know, I was there or thereabouts, middle of the pack mm. or whatever. But then just one day, it just clicked. There was it a was it yeah. a moment in time for you when you felt, oh, actually, I'm I'm not that bad. Uh, I think the I think the first race I won, I think, was the four mile. Right. I think it was a, and um, from memory, I was number thirteen, and. Yeah, it's in the I book. Think, yeah, in yeah, the book, I it's in the. Marina's got yeah, it, yeah. Uh, collected some of the things, but um, from memory, um, I think being number thirteen, yeah. because it was an unlucky number, I immediately used that as a as a, a weapon for racing yeah. to prove that it wasn't a lucky number. So it actually. 
uh, in a lot of races, when you're, you're getting um, close, you're getting in finals or you're getting close to them, you, it's, it's difficult uh, psychologically to, to get the next, the next, that next step. That, that extra yeah, yeah. 5 or 10%, whatever it is, you, it's hard to get to that. But because I had that, um, the 13 in the back of my mind, that took away the psychological side of it, so I raced without the, the psychology side of it. Yeah, I And uh, that. I think that's why. I, I, I put that down to that's the, what you, yeah. uh, the, yeah. the, the reason for winning. That's it. how you look back on it. That's how I look yeah, back on it. You look back on it. That's, that's the reason. That's your slant on it. Yeah. That's my slant. That's, that's why I always had trouble in the five, because I couldn't, uh, so I, I beat myself up psychologically. Yeah, uh, yeah. okay. So who, I mean, presumably Ellis played a big part in, in your skating career. Well, yes, but he wasn't, he, he, he was never a top skater. Yeah. But he was, he was a, um, a, a good lad. So who, who, experienced lad. Who would you say then inspired you, you know, to, to be, you know. Better. Yeah. yeah, the better, you know, the champion that you was, in fact. Well, I think, I think it comes from yourself. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that, the, the, Person I, I remember at the time uh, who was always very good was Les Woodley. Yeah. And uh, he used to win a lot of races, was very dominant, uh, very focused, and, um, and would uh, put his stamp on the race to the uh, exclu exclusion of most things. Right. He was very, very focused. And I think that I, can, I would look back on him and say that he was the, probably the... Uh, um, the person that I remember looking up to at that time. Right. But other than that, I think it. Uh, I think you don't worry about anybody else. If you while you're coming up, I don't think you have a problem. I think that you, you 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 keep progressing and and uh, training and, and progressing, and you don't have a, a a problem. I think the problems come in when you get close to the top. When you get into that five percent then and you're then looked upon to be knocked off mm. that you then have your uh, psychological problems or 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 more more it's not necessarily your fitness or your or your skill on the on the um on the ring it's the um the way that you 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 approach the race and mm. how you how you approach it psychologically Oh, I'm it. sure that yeah. there's a, it's the mental side of it that can do you down. It's the mental side in, I think it's in most sports, that is, is very important um, when, you, when you're talking um, in the, that top five or ten, five, ten percent. Mm. It's that you can, you can train, you can be fit, you can um, race, but you you won't win unless you do it um, psychologically as well. So, it, in terms of the in the folly camp, if you like, you, you, like throughout sport, there's always been not a nemesis but a rival, a great rival like Prost and Senna in Formula One or Cohen Overt. Was it a folly and a somebody who, who whenever you went to a race, it was it really come down to to you and them or? Or was it somebody you always thought? I know you've mentioned Les Woodley, yeah, uh, Les, but he was probably a generation before he, he was, you. Or... He, yeah, he would have been. He would have been at the top when yeah. I was when I was coming up. Yeah. As I got as I uh, got to the um, into the top five percent, mm. then he was probably on his way out. Mm. Yeah. So was there anybody in there in that top um, five with you that you looked at as thinking, this is the guy who I'm going to have a problem with? Um, No, I don't. Mm. I don't. I don't recall anybody. That you always used to go out to race who you were racing against, yeah. and I don't remember thinking um, I've got to race. I've got to beat him, or I've got to beat him. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember thinking that way. It's a long time since uh, since I did it, but I, I don't remember thinking um, I've got to beat him. No. What about internationally? To turn to, to like on the international scene, was it was the skaters internationally who you again inspired you to to to, to do well? At the, no, it, it was all it, it was in skating uh, in our era. Um, it was it was difficult um, because 
uh, we used to we uh, skating at our time was generally social and racing so we used to race over a, a winter period mm -hmm. and we'd race on saturdays train on sundays or, uh, or during the week and um but the the racing was on indoor tracks on um, on small tracks uh, probably 100 meter tracks and um and it was a, there's a skill factor in it internationally there wasn't a lot of um track racing it was mainly road racing mm. so uh, as soon as you went to road racing it was um the the criteria was was entirely different the skill factor it was more um it, the, the, on a on a track you require a skill factor on a on the roads or on the bigger tracks it's much more fitness that's required and mm. and more technique you're using different muscles you're using different muscles uh, up here to what you're using on the track on a track it's it's short and on a on the road it's it's long and drawn out mm. and it and it is more more um, pushing from here so you have to learn when you when you come from the track to the road to become an international skater mm. you have to learn to road skate and it for me it took time to become a road skater really? because of that, that that change of technique and was that something you were very conscious of trying to change adapt a technique to the road or did it yeah. just come naturally or did no you... it didn't come naturally no i found i found it difficult initially of um uh, because I, I was uh, skating well on the track, mm -hmm. I expected to go onto the road and, and, and uh, skate similarly, but mm -hmm. I didn't. didn't. It wasn't. It, it was. It wasn't meant for me. I still. Uh, at that time, roads were um, uh, the wheels that we use. We didn't on the roads. We used wooden wheels, mm -hmm. and the wooden wheels were um, would wear oval. Um, because the, with the well, with the wooden wheels, you've got a, a soft area and a hard right. area. Right. They do actually, they, they can wear oval, so right. you, you can go along, and it can be it's expensive and it's uh, <laughs> and it's difficult. And um, so it wasn't until the plastic wheels come in that that, that things started to change um, on the roads. But there's always a problem on the road. It's getting the speed. Now, now, because of because of the, the you've got so many um, com, uh, compositions of wheels now mm. that you can get speed on the road for any surface. Yeah, At that true. time, you couldn't do. Um, it was more difficult. So you you, you found that there were the people that were um, uh, stronger, stronger skaters were better on the roads because of their um, their ability to struggle. I, I didn't. I, I I had more trouble with that. I I was better uh, on a fast surface. Mm. I could skate off a fast surface, not off a hard surface. Right. Does that yeah, sound, I know. Is that, no, no. Does that I, explain I, it sufficiently. Yeah, it does. I I know what you mean because again, it, mm. it, it, a, when I used to skate on on quads, I used to find it. I used to like itself an asphalt track where I could get something out of the ground. Yeah. Where I could push and get a push. Yeah. I was good. Technically, I wasn't very good. So where it was slippery, or where I, yeah. I was skitting over the ground, generally I, I, I come unstuck. You know, yes. where, so uh, you know my strength was my strength. So I, yes. I, I can relate to, to yeah. you know, the difference. So you you'd like yeah. to, you like a harder surface as opposed to a faster surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 A smooth surface. Yeah. I I know as I said you went away a few times and, uh, with the national team and. When I was growing up, the, the certainly in the early and mid seventies, even the late seventies, tactics by the Italians, predominantly yeah. Italians, was always was always known to be a bit on the the iffy side, for want of a better word. Yeah. You know, yeah, there was always a bit of yeah. a bit of grab going on. Was that true in the late sixties? Was that was that or was that something that you think emerged later on? Because I don't hear that much going on in sort of you know the, in the late sixties. I think there's always. But, there's there's always a uh, pulling of shirts mm -hmm. so there's always uh, um the italians were always experts at it yeah they, they are in any sport they're, they're experts at um, <laughs> failing uh, 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 with you know making a fa fa fouling a person yeah without being noticed by the officials right. 
they could fail you um, just by just a, sw a small tug on the shirt or a small pullback. Um, but they would always race as a team. The yeah. Italians would race as a team and they would all race. Gen as a general rule, uh, one person was selected that would, that would win that race. And so the other, there would, there would be three to four members in the team and they would work for that one person. They would either place him or or do whatever's necessary to block off the person so that he would win. So you think really, like that, from an Italian perspective, is their strength was the fact that they could race as a team. Yes. Not necessarily all the grab and the push and the, yes. but the, the actual just team yes. ethics, if you like. Yes, okay. definitely. Their, their, their racing philosophy was that they would, um, that they would, they went out there to win the race, yeah. and they went out there for one particular person, and they would they would win it, but they would win it by if they could they would they would try to win it fairly, but if if they couldn't win it fairly, then they, they weren't averse to um, to pulling and tugging to get what they wanted to get their guy over the line first. Yeah, did we employ the same tactics? No, <laughs> we, I don't. We do, we weren't experienced enough. Right. We we weren't. We didn't. Um, we needed. We needed a skater that was an old skater that had done international skating that would look after the team and explain to the team how they right. should go about racing. Mm -hmm. uh, at our time of do, uh, racing that wasn't available. Mm. Um, so you 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 raced um, how you thought you should race and. Generally, it was more individual. I mean, you'd let your teammate in, or you'd uh, you'd yeah. you'd be for your teammate, but you wouldn't race as a team because you you didn't know what team tactics were. Right. So you didn't have a you didn't have a a formula for um, for racing. No, you didn't go out and say right, we're we're gonna do, we're gonna race this way or we're gonna race that way. But none of us were good enough to do to, that. to do that. You know? In terms of like your international career, I was quite surprised when looking at it. Is that something I considered? And whether it's whether I explain myself a bit better, whether it's reflection on skating these days. But people who have uh, an international career these days tend to go on for quite a while, like you know. And whether that's because there's not a big pool of skaters to actually select from, therefore it tends to be the same couple of faces that go. But your international career, I felt, was relatively short in terms of yeah. Worlds and Europeans. Yeah. I mean, you, I didn't realise until today actually that you, you went to the Europeans in Insel. I think you'd forgotten as well, is that and got third in the thousand metres yeah. uh, in Insel uh, yeah. in the Europeans. I didn't. Uh, I don't even yeah, in '67. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and uh, so. But your first World Championships, and you only went to two. Um, your yeah. first World was Vicenza yes. in '68, yeah. um, and again, if you look at the results on paper. Certainly, from from I suppose if I look at it as 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 a kid growing up, who Johnny Folly was was the best thing since sliced bread. These are Vicenza's results looked on paper quite mediocre. If I might say that, so I don't yes. I don't mean yeah, that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't mean that condescendingly. No, that's but fine. then fine. but I know you told me through a story in, in the in the five k where it showed I think you were twelfth or thirteenth. But there's more to it than that, weren't there? In the five yeah. k. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, well, in, um, yeah, I, I was actually racing quite well. Although that was my first world championships, mm -hmm. I was skating quite well, and um, I, I think I was going into the last lap was fourth, mm -hmm. and a German called uh, I think his name was Gunter Traub or Jürgen Traub, one of the one of the brothers, came down the inside as the Germans do, um, into the uh, didn't. Didn't, we were on woods at the time, we had wood, wooden wheels, and going into the second to last bend, he came across in front of me, didn't slow down for the bend, <laughs> flat he went down, <laughs> right in front of me and I went over the top. So and I was, I, I think that I would have finished higher and uh, yeah. it would have possibly got a medal. It was, it was, it was a possibility, but it was, um, I remember that that's, so that didn't show so good, but um, from your results there, I, I didn't remember coming um, yeah. higher than that in the other races. Yeah, you're so, top ten in the others. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, I'm talking yeah. mediocre. It's not mediocre, really. I mean, but it's by, no, they, by the they standards. No, they were not bad yeah. for that. No, they weren't. The, the track wasn't actually bad for me at that time. Yeah. I, I, I was racing okay. 
but I only uh, managed to get into that team uh, as the fourth band. I didn't. That was always. I never. They ne they, the teams were never selected on the results of um, racing during the year. They yeah, were which selected is interesting. For the yeah. trials. Which is interesting. I mean, here we yeah. have is that we got. There's there's three. British Champion, three men's British Championships in a, in a single year. Mm. You're winner of two of them, and yet you scrape into a team by the skin of your teeth. Yeah. Sounds a bit... Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds a bit wayward to me. Yeah. Well, that was, that was fact. That yeah. Was fact. We, um, yeah, that, was, that happened on a, on a couple of occasions. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, the, um, one, one international I missed out on... Um, uh, well, that was when um, hmm. it, the trials were in Birmingham, but there'd been Europeans. That, that was when, uh, when it was, uh, I think it was Danny Kelly and Leo Eason and, and Ricky May and Bill, I think, I think Bill Sharma. And, um, but they'd, they'd raced in Belgium in the Europeans, mm -hmm. and then they came back and they had worlds in Syracuse in, mm. in, in, in uh, Sicily yeah and I'd done well the previous year but I didn't go to the Europeans and I had no fitness going into the trials right in Birmingham in fact I had uh, escape problems at that time but that that's neither here nor there but it, it's um, I changed the skates and it, it didn't quite work mm. and no I didn't go to that one so that, that was that was a disappointment really because, yeah. uh, I didn't I did went to the trials and uh, and I raced all the year and been in the higher echelons, but I didn't get into the team. And did you do well in the trials and just not no. get in? Oh right, so it was so what you? No, that was, said, it was fair. It, yeah, it was fair. It was oh, fair okay. selection because the selection was under trials alone. No, 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 yeah, no, right. I wasn't. No, yeah, no, yeah. So no, yeah. in the trials, I wasn't good enough to be selected. No. Is that? Do you think that's the right way of doing it, or is that of interest? Do you think I that think was it, right think, at the time? I think. Or? It, I think. Um, I think you should sometimes search for reasons if the if there are if you if you um, expect to select certain members of a team, um, although it's based on trials, yeah. you should still keep in consideration uh, their um, racing abilities. Mm. Well, it's interesting, I especially know, if they're champions. Or yeah, well, we, we'd spoken earlier about '68 uh, when you did make the team for the Worlds. So although you went to the, the Euros in '67, the first Worlds you went to was '68 in Vicenza. Okay. And the team was yourself, Bill Sharman, uh, Mickey McGough, I think, yes. and, and Leo, yes. yeah. from a senior man's point of view. Yeah. And and I think you made the point that that Leo seemed to go well in the trials and then sort of fade away. Actually, in the competition itself, um, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm just no. I, I mean, the, the point I'm making, really, I suppose, is, is that um, you know, it, perhaps they should have looked at, at the racing overall. And, yes. you know, Because if you're just going to say this is the trials and this is it, yeah. although everybody knows the criteria, it's probably not the best criteria. No, well, you you, you have to you have to go with what they do. Yeah. Um, and you you hear of it in other sports. It's that's not true, it's not yeah. just it's not just skating. That's that true. Happens. It, this happens in, uh, for, in other in other times, but I think um, some of that comes down to um, can, it can come down to lack of training, but it can come down to uh, psychological problems um, where you beat yeah. yourself up in the mind. I think sometimes you do that. Yeah, especially. Um, sometimes you you like to prove things to yourself, but you don't like to prove things. Uh, you don't yeah. like people um, uh, analysing you. Yeah. Well, I mean, you like to you like to do you do it your, your own way. Well, in in, in the case of like Leo, it, I mean, it, to be fair, he'd been around a long time, really. I suppose yeah, by sixty eight. I mean, he was world champion in sixty three. I know it's only five years on, but that's you know five years on from sixty three. I mean, in sixty three, he, he must have been you know. I don't know how old he was, but I would imagine in his thirties. I, I, I imagine because he, yeah. you know, he'd been he had been racing long before that. Yeah, in, oh, yeah. well, fifty six, I think he went into, you know, to Barcelona. So, so you know, by sixty eight, he he was really, you know, it must have been coming to the end of his career anyway. It must have, the writing must have been on the wall for him. But anyway, I we, think he not... was. I think he. I think he had. Um, uh, um problems with leg problems I right I, I okay. don't remember exactly no coaching, but he didn't he didn't escape very well in the championships no, no. Mm. so 68 then so you know Vicenza um, 
you, you come back and, and then the following year, 69, mm. we spoke domestically about it, but 69 was a massive year for you, really. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. And not only for you, but for British skating in general. Um, December 69, the, the team gets selected, just a men's team. There's no women's world championships and, and you, you off your trolley to Mar del Plata, Argentina. And uh, it's the f I believe it's the first time a British team has skated outside of Europe in a major championship. So they've been in Mar del Plata before the Worlds in 66, but on the road. So this was a brand new 200 metre bank track, which is the first bank track you'd skated on in Mar del Plata. It was the first time you'd been to a bank track. Um, to to actually race on, yeah. Really? Um, the there was a what we did. We did some trials up in up in Birmingham, and uh, the athletics track. They they Cos was it Cosford? Cosford. Yeah. Used to have a um, athletics track. That's right. And they yeah. the runners used to run round on the. It, at the time, it it was wooden. That's right. So um, we then used their track a couple of times. For, to just test it for banking, which was good because it was ideal for it was ideal for skating. You, it, no problem yeah. at all. We could we could skate off the banking and and it was okay. Was it but massively it different? Me. Did it suit it suited you? As a, it yeah. suited me because it wasn't uh, it wasn't because it wasn't road. Yeah. It was it was a it was a two hundred meter circ, uh, tr track. Track if you like. track, yeah. Yeah, that suited me, and so Mardo Plata suited me. And do you think psychologically that was a big boost to you as well? I mean, not a road, here we are, it's a track. Um, or did you just go no, out and find? No, I, I think uh, I, I, at the time, I don't think I, I would even think about it. I think yeah. um, subsequently I, I've, that's what I've thought about it. Yeah, yeah that's what you've told yourself. I've told myself, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that's, uh, yes, I, 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 I realised that I uh, uh, was a better track skater than yeah. I was a road skater, and therefore it... It, it did benefit me. I was because of Brixton. Yeah. I was yeah. probably um, fast coming out of a, out of a bend. Out, out of, yeah. Because Brixton was square, so you always you always skated on it. You had the ability to yeah. come out of a, a bend. Right. Quickly. So, okay. So off your trolley to to mm. Mardell Plata, and there's you, Bill Sharman again, Mickey McGough, and new boy on the team. Johnny Fry, and and we got the ten thousand meters. So your race, effectively, was that the was that as you raced before that? Because I know you had a silver in the twenty k. Was that yeah. before or after the ten? No, that was before. Oh right, so you that knew was you was in with a the shape then. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, the twenty thousand was the first day, the 10,000 was the second day. Right. 10,000 is the last race on the calendar before the two men. Right, so because, just for, for clarity for people watching this, is that the World Championships in 69, uh, as they were for most, uh, prior to that, was, was just two days of racing. Yes. It was just two days. Yeah. So, unlike... You did the 5,000 and the 20,000. Yeah. And the sprints and the 10,000 were on the second day. Oh, right, so, because now, it, like, they start with sprints now, everything is, you know, the, the, the mm. shortest distance is always the first, is the kickoff. Yeah. But, the, you, so the sprints were on the second day then? Which yes, I'm sure, with, I'm sure yeah, they were. I'm, I'm sure right. that the first race yeah. was the 5,000. Right. The second race was the 20,000. Right. I think the sprints must have been uh, the following, following day. And the twenty and the ten thousand was the last race, and mm. they were followed by the two man relay. So, did you race in the five k? Uh, no. So you so you just did the twenty I did and the then twenty and the and, 10, you, right. and you come second. Who and that was Dean Hayes who won the twenty. Yeah. 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 So again, was you close to him? Yeah, uh, I think there was a um, uh, the the laps because. Because it's a long race, yeah. um, and they, there's there's a number of people on the track, so they probably there's probably people all around the track. I think the lap scorers, um, you're always worried about the, the the way they're lap scoring, and you're never too sure when it comes to the bell. What's the last? Where is it the last lap, or isn't it the last lap? And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I seem to remember. Um, that the, 
no, it's recollection now. Yeah. Um, that the in the twenty that there was still a lap to go. I think that the I think they'd they'd sprinted for the line or sprinted and then there was still a lap to go. But if there'd been another lap, I think that that, that, that it would have been beneficial to me. You know? Really, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, I didn't have any problem, not, not any real problems with that track at that time. Mm. I was okay on that, that track. Although the, the, uh, the track was actually, um, uh, it was banked, but it was flat at the apex of the, at the, apex of the bend. You, you had parabolic as they call it now. Yeah. Yeah. And then, right. it, and then it had the curve That's going it, yeah. up. It's going up right, yeah. So flat. You, it's flat. You, didn't, you can flat you track it at the bottom. Yeah, it was flat yeah. track at the bottom, so yeah. you, you, it didn't go up like that, yeah. it went up like that, so yeah. that you had that flat bit before. That's right. So you couldn't get benefit from the from the um, the curve of the bend without going wide yeah. and using the banking to come off of. That was, that's, um, that was beneficial, but you had to be careful how you used it, because you can lose places by using the banking. So you come second in the 20. Mm. I mean, how, can you remember? I've missed a long time ago. I know, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. but I mean, do you remember how you felt then? Do, was you thinking, well, if I, if I don't win anything else, I'm quite happy. I'm, I'm second in the world here. Um, I, I think I was surprised mm. that I was I was close to winning it. Yeah. I think that coming off, I, I was thinking, well, I'm, that's this. That's I was close. Yeah. You know, they they weren't faster than me. I was I was in a position that I could have won. Yeah. So the following day, then, so you get out of bed. It's the ten k, another race you're in. Did you do the sprints, by the way, or? Um, I did the time trial. Uh, I can't I can't remember doing the. Uh, perhaps I didn't do the sprints. I must have right. done. I must have done the time trial. Oh yes, I did do the print. I did do the sprints. Right. I did do the sprints. Actually, yes. I've got I've got the the books on yes, there. Yes, I did, I did do the sprints. Yeah. I, I got yeah. I got turned over in the sprints. Oh. I can't remember by, by <laughs> whom. I think in the knockouts, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it might no, I can't remember whether it's Kent or not. No. Well, so we we come to the ten k, right. and it was you said the last race at the ten k. Yes, that we went before the relays. Yeah, but the ten yes. k. Yeah. So talk me through it. I mean, let's face it, 10k, probably the most important race in British skating history, so, yeah. you know, since 1969. Um, yeah. I th I, from memory, I think we had to do, um, did, in the 10, did we? I think in the 10, we had to do heats. I think that they, they, they eliminated um, some of the skaters by doing heats. Right. Sounds about right. Um, yeah. yeah. So, we had to, we had to qualify for the final. So, um, in the final, uh, what do I remember about the final? It, I can remember the. I can't. I remember there was a couple of breaks, and um, there was a, a, a Spanish guy that was very keen to go off the front, and and uh, so it meant chasing him down. But only um, only towards the end, it was a case of um, what what do I do? I know. I, I, I've got no. I don't remember having problems through the race. I don't remember ever being uh, struggling through the race at all. I just I, I remember being um, a little bit tired because generally, generally races and certainly international races are never um, at one pace. Mm. And this is That's this is something that, yeah. that, that that was never taught. You had to learn by by experience. Was that. Um, it's either flat out or it's um, slow. Yeah. Or it's flat out and it's or it's slow. So you're never to be able to do that. You, you're you're um, it's easy and you're tired and it's yeah. easy and you're tired. Yeah. So that's a, um, that's something you have to get used to. But towards the end of the race, I don't remember having a problem. But it was the problem was to um, say how do I win it? Do I go early or do I go late? And the di I finished up making the decision to go late. I decided that because um, I, I practiced previously using the banking um, to to uh, build up a speed because um, because of the nature of the track, 
um, and the wheels that we were using, on the apex of the bend, you you couldn't you couldn't get your maximum speed because you you would you would slip there. Mm. So you had to going going in you could skate hesitate and skate out. So by using the banking, you could skate all the way around. But by using losing using the banking, you would lose a position because they were coming around the inside. Yeah, yeah. You actually you 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 were losing five yards. Yeah. To to yeah, try to, to try, to try and to gain it. it. Yeah. So that it was a it was a it always calculated like, decision. Yeah. It always looks like people are going away from you when they take the tight line. They yeah. get sucked into the tight line and sort of going budget. away. But you've got the greater speed off the bend. Yeah. To come back at them, which which we saw. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that that's what happened, and that that's what I decided to do, mm. and I decided to wait and 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 not not take it too early, although I felt okay about it. Yeah. And uh, and I went late, and and came off the banking, and yeah. and it worked. Between the two kiwis yeah. and, and away you went. Yeah, yeah, but I I, um, I felt comfortable doing that. Although it, it could have been, I could have done it by going to the front. Yeah, I, right. I felt strong enough to, to, to have done it anyway. So yeah, you, yeah you, you, whichever way you felt, you got that race in the bag. Yes, I think so. Think, I yeah. think I, I felt you, confident. You felt confident. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, but it was just the decision. The decision. What do you wish to do? Yeah. How, how, how do you do it? Are mm. you going to go here or are you going to go there? That's yeah. the biggest problem. Did, so you crossed the, the line first. first. Did it? Did it? Can you no. remember how you felt when you crossed the line? No, <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't remember really anything. I don't really remember anything. Um, I can't even recall remembering anything. Yeah, it was. Um, I, 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 I don't remember. Really, I really, really can't remember any, anything. The only, the only memory I have is if I look at photographs. I was say because we watched that clip of film back earlier. Yeah. I mean, it's a marvellous bit of film. And uh, did did it come fully back, or or did it feel and look like somebody else you were watching, or or did you think that's me? You know, that's that's watching it back. Could you relate to it? No, it just it reminded me um, of what what had happened. Although I I, um, I I don't remember it quite the way the the film shows it but it, it, it's uh, um, reality and uh, and because um, filming it, it can be slightly distorted can't it yeah uh, and i don't mean distorted but uh, it depends on the angles that you take yeah, out yeah. To, to, to actually see what's going on but sometimes as well i think i think your memory plays tricks because it, yeah. it's, it's it's sometimes you ever think that like it's how you remembered it until you see something back like that and you think Actually, that's not quite how I remembered it. No, you know, it's, you, know, it's you true, tell yeah. you tell these stories about how yeah. you won this or what happened in a race or whatever. You look at it back and think, actually, it's like, you know, it's yeah. funny how, how, how a group of stories from a, a number of different people all coming mm. together gives a better picture because yes. it's, it's interpretation. It is, yeah. That's Bill. Bill. Bill uh, oh yeah, three from the back. Three from the back, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let's build in the front. Let's build in the front. Little okay. shiny. Two. Is that the old man? The old yeah. man in fourth. Yeah. Yeah. He's third there, and he going around the outside. Fourth. Oh, that's me. Oh, oh sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, see, this is, these are different races, so they're not yeah. the same race, as oh. you can see. Yeah, that was, that was just a heat, that was qualifying. That's, this is it. This is, this is actually the final. This is the final lap. That's, that's where it. you get them. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I went off the banking. John Folly, world champion. Yeah. Just like that. Just like that, that was it. So those other bits were uh, were just other bits of racing. Who took this film? Uh, uh, McGough, I think. That's it. That's all. We, that's all we got. I thought we had it sort of front on, like the photograph where you scissored no. them. No, that, you just remember the photograph. Yeah, the photograph. Oh, it was gone. Yeah. Oh, that bit of film. That 
and so fantastic. Oh, uh, team manager. Yeah. Was he the team manager in Vicenza or was that Henry? Uh, Hen uh, Henry, yeah. It was Henry. So, Henry so 69 was Bob's first Bob's fair first team. One, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Uh, I know I, I went around to see Bob uh, a few yeah. weeks back and he's got a lot, it's something, his prized possession, and you probably know, he's tankered. Do you remember his tankered? You no. got, yeah, funny enough, Dad remembers it. You all got him a tankered from the World Championship winning team. And it was, uh, and, oh. and it's got your names engraved on this tankard, the winning team, oh. to Bob, our manager. You don't remember that? No. No, really. That's right, in terrible. The, I, I, I no. should re that's something I should remember. Oh. I should remember that. No, I don't remember that, no. But uh, I think that um, he undoubtedly deserved it because um, having Bob as a manager, he was very, very good. For a, very good for a team as a team manager. That's funny. He, um, not necessarily a coach. Yeah. But, but as a team at, manager, looking after you. That's. He was. He was superb. That's he what. Had, it's he, funny. That's what you need. And you need, you need um, someone that's interested in you. Yeah. As as a individual, and and will help in any way he can. Yeah. That, for the, the simple thing was that he, he bought a teapot and tea, and every morning, it, lying in bed, he would bring in a, he would bring in a cup of tea. Okay, got a cup of tea for you, lads. It's now, funny, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. that just calms everything down, settles everything, and and just makes it makes it much more homely. It makes him you, you realise that he's there for you. That's you what know. my dad said. He, he said he used to bring a cup of tea, but he said he he never wanted for anything with Bob. No, he, you know, in and. It was funny because his outlook, when I interviewed him, um, I spoke to him, um, he said that, he, he openly said that he felt that Crystal was treated the skaters like kids, like babies, you know, oh, they, true, they were yeah. kids, you know, uh, and needed to be brought into line type thing. He says, yeah. he says, but these were men, these were grown men and they yeah. deserved to be treated like grown men. Absolutely. You know, uh, and, and that was how he managed, and to be fair, he couldn't have wished for more success. He got a gold and silver out of you. He got the silver out of Bill. Yeah. He got a fourth place out of, yeah. you know, my dad. I think Mickey got a sixth. You know, all top ten finishes in the world championships yeah. in his first ever outing as a yeah, yeah. as a team manager. Yeah. Um, well, we went just just um, emphasising that fact. We went we went along to train, and they and the Argentinians said, "No, you can't train. No, you can't you can't do anything here. It's uh, for whatever reason." They said. Mm -hmm. no. And Bob, he went straight into them. Don't you tell me what I can do with my skaters. My skaters are here to do this, and I'm doing this and doing that. And with language difficulties as well. And we got what we wanted because there was this man standing there, standing there, demanding yeah. something for his skaters. Yeah. Well, perhaps they didn't realise he's an ex ducker. You don't mess with yeah, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, might, it might be small in stature, but oh, oh yeah, no, no, yeah. he was. He, he, he was there. That was his. That was his role, and yeah. he, he thought that's not beneficial for the skaters. Therefore, I'm going to make it beneficial for the skaters, and he did. You know, we had just a, um, a difference. Uh, you don't like to to um, drag to, to bring uh, make too many comparisons. Really, it's not. Mm. It's sometimes it can be unfair because people put a lot into a lot into sport, but the difference. With uh, with Henry Crystal as a manager, he did a lot for skating. He mm. was very very beneficial. He was always there, always support su supportive for the the yeah. event. But I think generally probably for himself as well. Mm. And it wasn't always beneficial to the skaters. You know, when right. we we went away, uh, Vicenza, which was probably uh, was my first um, skating abroad, and that they, they want they took us down to. Um, Sicily to race down there after the after the championships, but um, because of the accommodation, the accommodation wasn't up to Crystal standard. He brought us home. Oh, uh, really? Before before we completed the racing, although right. they they'd flown us from um, from Vicenza down to Sicily. Yeah. And uh, we we spent um, a couple of days there. We skated up Mount Etna. 
yeah. being a two-man relay up Mount Etna. <laughs> Yeah, quite. Not easy. <laughs> no, and then, it was dull. It was, it was, and then the well, following day, we, 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 yeah. we spent 22 hours on the train from uh, Sicily yeah. to Milan. Uh, 22 hours standing up or sitting oh. on our cases. Yeah. The whole length of Italy. Not happy yeah. then. 22 hours. That was, that was bad news. So there's was, obviously so that was because he didn't have he didn't have any decent accommodation for really? himself. We weren't worried. We yeah. were knackered. Yeah. You know what you like. You'll if sleep you're, anywhere you like. You're, you're, you're there to race. Where's there somewhere to lay down? Yeah. So you can yeah. sleep. All oh, right. Mm. So that was um, mm. that wasn't that was uncomfortable, and yeah. that wasn't right. Yeah. He didn't he didn't do what was right. Really. Yeah. He didn't do what was right for the skaters. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It, it, yeah. It was self self interest. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, it, it, we move on from '69 world champion. What was the reception like when you got back? Um, oh, excellent! Trip? Really, yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was very, very good because we um, we came back into Heathrow and there was uh, quite a crowd of old skaters. And, really, and people uh, there to see us. Yeah, fantastic. It was very good. Yeah, it was because you didn't expect it. You didn't. Yeah, you yeah. didn't really expect that sort of thing. But there was a lot of people then. We well, don't expect it. I mean, like it's a minority sport. I'm not so sure that would happen these days. Um, no, no, I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> well, what's I funny? Know, I, could, yeah. I didn't expect it then, and when when all the people were there, it was quite a surprise. Well, what it sounds to me like, see, the sport I feel is probably half the size now what it was back then, probably mm. even less, and yet you, yeah, and yet the community spirit. Is only half of what it was back then as well. So, you know, what I'm saying, is it like you'd have thought that we've been such a small nucleus of people now, it'd be more, it'd be more close than it's, but it's not really. If anything, it's probably you've got fewer people who are more distanced from one another. Yeah, I think the yeah, so it appears, but I yeah, oh wrong. yeah, I can. Yeah, the, the the problem, I think, why um, while there were rinks, yeah. So that you always had an influx of, of, yeah. of people coming through, um, because it, we, we, you, you can't you can't become a skater uh, uh, now mm. easily mm. because you cut you haven't got the initial training, uh, i.e. of enjoying going to yeah. going to a rink yeah. to to learn to skate to learn to uh, have um, fast sessions and um, then to move on it's a it's in all sports it's a gradual thing you, mm. if you're playing football you go down you, you start off kicking the ball about with your dad then you go down the park and you play with the kids and you go through the school yeah. um, curriculum of, of playing football or cricket or whatever sport it is and then and, you, uh, and it's, it's a gradual stepping stone and skating's got to be the same he's got and, and the rinks are that initial schooling they are. That's where you start to learn to skate. Mm -hmm. Once you've learned to skate, then you it, 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 you then either move out because it, it, the of the hundred people that that, that um, start skating, you only get five of them that yeah. stay in skating. Yeah. And so uh, um, you've got that hundred to start in 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 the rinks. Then you get the five that go on to make it. Not an, it, it moves from a pastime to a sport, yeah. and it's that it's when it becomes a sport that you then become more dedicated to to doing what you're doing, and it, it's um, because you haven't got the rinks now, you haven't got that large involvement, mm. so you haven't got the percentage coming off of that that are going into the into the racing or the sporting side of it. Yeah, you you. Uh, now you've got um, there are there are, there are the inline skating now, and there's there's more people do the inline skating, but mm. they do it as a a, f um, a a freedom that they can skate um, along the promenades right. at the at the, yeah. the at the at the, uh, um, at the seasides, yeah. and um, but there's. And and you get you get the skating parks where they they mess about a yeah. bit, but there's not the social involvement that there was then, and I think it's the social involvement that actually moves you on into the sport. That's and, that's and an interesting point. I I tell you why it's an interesting point because the Birmingham club probably makes up fifty percent of the current membership of the national go of the national sport, and the Birmingham club have a, have their own track. 
albeit and they've got a, a center as well but they mix the fun with the sport because it's predominantly kids you know say kids you know upwards from four-year-olds you know up, up to 16 17 year olds predominantly and then you've got a couple of seniors but but really the kids and the thing is is that and you just hit on something really is that that like the session they, these kids started off because on a saturday they have an they have open days for people from all over the city to just come and and do things and play games and they might have a game of hockey and they might yeah. you know so they, they, they start out by getting exposure to the sport yeah. as you quite rightly say as a as a pastime yes they come along on a saturday because they enjoy socializing yes. mixing with people and as a club they are probably the most social group within the sport now and i'm not i, I mean I, I might come across as being a bit biased because i know my dad runs the birmingham club and yeah. that but really he's done it he couldn't do that himself he's done it with the parents with uh, you know uh, of these kids and with people who've come along to and people who just want to help out you know senior people who have come along to these group sessions that are just not necessarily just training you know but are just playing around uh, and, have, and they've then gone on to bigger and better things and just helped out to if you looked at the track you know the, the HL8 sort of facility it's second to none in the country mm. absolutely without a shadow of a doubt mm. you know it's, it's, it's a picture but as you quite rightly say it's the involvement yeah. uh, of these people and, and and not just getting on there, training session, going home. It's there's yeah. far more to it than that. Absolutely. And I yeah. think you, as you quite rightly said, it's it lost that when yeah. the rings closed. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, it's it's a hard thing for youngsters because they um, uh, now there's there there are always there's um, problems out with youngsters um, going into drugs and going yeah. um, various different things and. Um, but there's not enough outside activities for them to do. They can't. They can't. They can't. They can't skate. They can go and play football down the park. Yeah. They can't play tennis because it's too expensive. Yeah. They can't. Um, um, and there's, there's lots of other sports that they that people would like to do, but the facilities aren't aren't easily available in England for them to do yeah. because anything that's, that, that you want to do costs money. Well you see it now with the tennis don't you? Yeah. You, you see you know Wimbledon and yet you know into the fourth players. round and we've got one player again into the fourth yeah. round so yeah. Yeah. Because it's not accessible. No because uh, to play tennis uh, even down our local park yeah. it costs you seven pounds an hour. Yeah. You know now and who's you can't, who's, the kids can't play, play, play that, aren't they? Oh. Getting back to the skating then, like you said, it, nine, 1969, we spoke about the World Championships, 1970, there's no Worlds or Europeans in 1970, right. just British Championships. Right. And then 71 comes around, you're at the height of your career now, 71, you win all three British titles, the first bloke in 48 years to do so, only the second man since the war, uh, you win all the titles in 71. You go to the European Championships in Wetran and you're European champion. Do you remember much of that particular you know, uh, event? Yeah, um, well, the, I was coming, uh, it's probably it's getting close to uh, retiring. You know, you, you was, know, that, think, was you conscious that you were getting close to retiring? Um, or, or? Well, I, in 70, 71 I was uh, 29. Well, that's old. <laughs> well, um, it's not. It's not necessarily old, but it's the. It, it, I, I had a young family, yeah, of course. and it's the commitment you have to give to it, sure. give to give to the sport that you're not giving to your family. And is there a benefit? Yeah. Um, well, in anything you did in skating used to cost you money. Yeah. We you, you didn't. Get, we weren't. We, there was no pay. Yet uh, our travel was paid for. And our living accommodation was paid for, but anything skating-wise, you paid for. Yeah. You know, any of our, our wheels, uh, uh, anything, any equipment, we you paid for. Nothing. We didn't get any 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 form. At that time, there was no form of sponsorship or anything That's like right. that. So you, so, yes, we had our accommodation and our travel paid for. But other than that, you it it's came funded, from you. Self-funded. Yeah. And if there weren't championships, I, yeah. you mentioned that there was one in 69, not in 70. Yeah. Now, what do you do for that whole year? What do you yeah. do for the whole... The, the, well, yes, all right, we had Europeans in 71, but there's two years where you've got to commit yourself to training and mm -hmm. to keep fit, and 
you're not sure that there's going to be championships at the end of it to, mm. to be able to perform. So you're um, thinking about what else you, you need to be doing. So seven, and you carry on. Yeah. So you, 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 you are three times British champion the one year. Yeah. You, do, you go to, the, to Wetran or yeah. Ghent uh, in 71 and uh, you win the knockout. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're second in the that time was a trial. Surprise, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're still yeah. reigning world champion at the time. Don't yeah. forget, you know, yes, yes. you were still reigning world champion right until 1975. Yeah. But you know, in uh, so you you win the knockout. Um, so yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it must have been quite. A it was. It's. It's hard when you when you go through the knockout stages. Uh, it, it's not an easy thing to do mm -hmm. because it's. Um, uh, it's, there's so many stages. Yeah. There's so many races that you go through. I, ca I can't remember. It, 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 it can. Does it amount to ten? It probably it, doesn't. It, about it, eight or something like that. Who's in it, but yeah. it, all right, you it's could say it's, only, it's a thousand meters. It's yeah. only it's eight thousand meters, but it's done at um, pretty far. Yeah. It, so there's a lot of nervous tension in there yeah. because of the races you're going into, and and so you 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 really at the end of it you're quite exhausted. How did you race it? Did you go for the wins or did you go for the times or did it just depend? No, I went for the wins every time. Every time. But yeah, because the Germans went for the uh, um, times. I you you had, drew I had two German. Germans. Schicker, yeah. was it? I two, think, but yeah, yeah or... two Germans I had and they both went for times. Right. Which didn't ben didn't wasn't beneficial to me. I, at that time I had speed as opposed yeah. to endurance. It this, the track suited me. It was more suitable for me. Interesting that you say it suited you because it was a road circuit and Yeah. And and But it know, was um it wasn't a large road circuit, and it, it had a dodgy bend because it because it had a, a bend that, that sloped away. Was it like Kings Norton? Um, Do you remember Kings Norton? The reason yeah. I say that is because my dad always said that seventy one. He said it was just like Kings Norton. He says, oh, and that's right. why he felt it. Oh, right. Because he used to train really? on Kings Norton quite a bit. Yeah, and he yeah. felt it was a similar sort of oh, right. feeling. Not not. Not to me, it wasn't. Right, okay. But uh, um, I can see perhaps why he why he thought mm -hmm. that. No, to me, because Kings Norton had that. Did a bit um, of downhill. Yeah, and had a bit of a downhill and a bit of adverse camber. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the adverse camber. Yeah. Um, so that so that bend was beneficial to me. That was a yeah. finishing bend. Right. Okay. So because it uh, the adverse camber, it it was you beneficial felt. to me. Yeah. So and so you go through to the final then, and, and in the final yeah. it was Ruggieri. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, the little guy with the glasses, who wasn't yeah. half bad really. No, he's, he was very good. He was his his um, st stature was yeah. uh, he, uh, undermined his ability really. He, yeah. He was quite he was a pretty good, pretty rugged, uh, strong-minded skater. Yeah. And, and pretty good. Yeah. Was he the best of three? Yeah. And did he win any of them? I don't think so. I think I won the first, the first two. two. And that was it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So that was yeah. so you say it was quite a shock, but yeah. They, yeah. yeah. No, I didn't. There was, there was no intention for that. It, it was just the way it worked. It's just that it was it. Um, the I didn't go. I didn't go out there saying I, I, I want to win the thousand meters. Mm -hmm. I don't remember thinking that, um, but that's the way it worked. Yeah. I always remember being uh, as a kid, and I'm talking as a young kid now. I, I I don't hold it against you now, but I did then. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the fact that that you won the thousand meters and me dad weren't in the placings and then he won the time trial and, mm. and you were second and i was gutted because i thought you've got another medal more than him yeah. as a kid like <laughs> because i thought like you know because from yeah. I, 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 my group as well mm. into with the international skaters the only international skater on my lips was cantarella yeah you know and my old man had beat him in a time trial which was virtually unheard of and then yeah so is you, and I thought, well, actually, that takes the shine off it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but yeah, to beat true, yeah. cancer in a time trial, yeah. you know, all that aside, really, I mean, absolutely, that absolutely. That, that's what that's why I say that's that was the uh, the track um, was more beneficial to our style of skating yeah. at that time. Yeah. Well, Jeff Mattox got uh, a, a third yeah. in the uh, as 10, well 000. in the ten thousand. Yeah. The seventy one, so uh, you say the track suited us more than the Italian, it was obvious, I, I think mean, so, say, yeah. yeah. And, and you say Jeff Mattox uh, uh, was in it. So was that your last race? Well, when was your last race? That was 
That was my last race one, yeah. Really? So you did the Europeans. Did you did you race domestically back? You know, did you come back and race, or or was that it? Um, this is the point where you start asking you questions you can't remember. Now, I can't. I can't remember. I think we may have we may have um, raced a couple of times after. Well, I know. I can't, I can't really remember as, where. As far well, it was, that was September seventy one. That was I think, and, yeah. and as far as I know, all the the records I've got, you know, in terms of you know books I've got, all results I've got, you you sort of just disappear off the radar. And yeah, I went, that's when I went to Australia. So, so and so it, it was seventy three. Yeah, when you so went. That was seventy one. Well, seventy two. Have... There was no worlds, no, no Euros, and no, no. British Championships in seventy two, which was the first time ever. There's been no British Championships in a, in a year other than the war years. I know there was uproar about that as well at the time, but you know. Um, yeah, I, I can't. I can't remember. The yeah, year. seventy-two was a year where there was no championships. Yeah, yeah. See that. So that was one of the reasons for Another, thinking of retiring. And thinking this is it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to. You know, I've, I've had it now. Yeah. I've got. Yeah. To, I've got to move on. Yeah. Really. I think that's what it comes down to. I think you you still feel that you can you, you don't not necessarily want to retire, but you you can't see ahead. Yeah. If you can't if you if you've got nothing to go for, mm. um, for example, they've got the Olympics next year and they know that they, they right. they're going to do it. So that's what that's what they're aiming for. That's where they go. If you if you don't if you've got no idea of what's ahead, what can you train for? So you, you went into those European Championships. Did you? Did you know that these were going to be your last races? Did you? Did you, did you no. know? You didn't know. You, you made, so you made that decision after that championships. Then you didn't go into thinking I'm going to do this and that's it. I'm hanging my skates up. No, I didn't. I didn't go into it that way. No. Right. Okay. No, I. I. I uh, it, it's not an easy thing to 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 say you're going to retire. Mm, I know. It's not an easy thing to say. <laughs> you. Um, you. Uh, you want to keep doing it because that's what you've been doing for a number yeah. of years. You know that um, you're. Um, this is the time when you can benefit psychologically because yeah. you've overcome those problems, yeah. um, and you you know you've only got to do it. Fi you 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 can still do it physically as long as you can still do it physically. Then that's okay, um, and if you still feel capable well at thirty, you're generally still capable. Yeah, yeah. I think absolutely. I think actually there you. It, your later, your later twenties are your are your um, yeah. best years because you, that, you've yeah. got um, you've got more um, uh, mental ability than you yeah. had previously. With well, the experience, the experience, yeah, the experience yeah. mental ability, you know how to yeah. react to things, and you've got yeah. the whole package in them sort of years. Yeah, and you know what you've got to do to try. And, yeah. So you you really st stopped really as i see it at the top of your career the very yes. top of your career you, you were there there was nowhere else to go really you got no, the worlds right. and the yeah. europeans three british titles in one year under your belt where do you go from there yeah you know nowhere, yeah. australia <laughs> yeah that's right it was then looking for um something different so we went to australia yeah. and is that how, how did that come about then what, what um well it's, uh it's it's been in the back of our mind for a long time. We we'd spoken about it for a long time, and then yeah. and um, we thought we we're looking for a change of life, change of change of um, ideas, or just the just the thought of travelling. But at that time they were still doing it. Was still only cost ten pounds, so yeah. we oh, yeah. we went we went to um, uh, Australia for twenty quid. Really. <laughs> <laughs> with, with two kids, really, and we flew over to um, LA, and then from LA to to uh, Australia. So where about in Australia did you set foot and we, set up? Well, we, we we initially went to Melbourne because we we had a friend that lived in Melbourne, oh. so we stayed down with him for a couple of weeks, and then we went up to Brisbane to um, a, a guy called Con Gautos. I know Con Gautos. Yeah, he was the yeah. Australian. Yeah. Um, uh, the guy running the Australian Federation at that time, and he had a rink down in in Brisbane. Did you know him from before? Or no, I, no, the, uh, I think um, it came about because we we were going to Australia. I think uh, uh, Brian Cornelius had the contact with Con yeah. Gautos. I can't remember their type. It's probably to, probably to do with skates. Yeah, because yes, yeah, right, he's he was, the, he was manufacturing yeah. skates and, and things. Yeah, um, and. Con Gautos was in 
came over to England for um, some reason, and so I went down and met him, and he he he, he then offered me a job, right, um, coaching in in Queensland. So at that time, I was I was a, a, a draftsman at that time, right, and um, it was a change of scenery, change of activity, change of everything. Yeah. So was that your job then in, in, in Australia, did coaching or did you do something yeah. else as well? Um, well I did a bit of coaching Yeah. Uh, for about, uh, I can't remember, it may have been for about a year I suppose. Right, okay. I can't remember, I can't remember exactly how long. Um, but yeah, my, my, the idea when I, when I first went over there was to manage a rink, but when we got over there the uh, the rink wasn't wasn't available. Oh right. Um, money problems and yeah. building problems and all that sort of thing. So it it took um, a, f a, a couple of few years before that came about. And by that time, um, I'd moved out and moved back into um, to, into drafting into right. engineering. You know. So you never did own a rink. No, never did run a rink. Never, never, never run a rink. No, so I just did the scope coaching. Yeah. So you went over there in seventy three. You, you, you go in with Con Galtos pretty yeah. much straight away, I, I presume, yeah, yeah and, and did the ring. The, the, the Australians never emerged on the world scene until 78, I think, which yeah. was the first time you... Yeah, well, um, yeah, that's right. I, I was with Con Galtos for a, a short while, which was um, at his, uh, his rink. Um, he was building in Mount Gravatt where we were living. Mm. Um, but I'd, we'd parted company by that time and I'd gone back into engineering. And then um, the Worlds came up in Argentina in, and then I was asked would I consider um, building a team, selecting a team and taking a team to, us, uh, to uh, Argentina. In 78? And I said yes. Yeah. Um, prior, prior to that they'd, they'd been a team that had gone to New Zealand. Right. In New Zealanders, there, there was a, a competition between the ah, Australians okay. and the New Zealanders at right. that time. They used to they one at one time they'd go to New yeah. Zealand, another time they'd come over to Australia. So right. there was a there was a bit of competitions going on there between them. Right. And um, uh, but so they've got some because I it, had, it's actually there's always skaters there. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it's hard to imagine that you've got a, a nation who no. never you know. No, they, how did they get into? How did they? Had they got a federation when you was there? Yeah, they, oh they'd yeah. got a skating federation. Yeah, oh yeah. They, they, they had all their them. championships but, and right. they used to have this, inter, uh, this intergalactic uh, yeah. competition. But um, uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't come to the Worlds. And, uh, the, the, yeah, the first Worlds was 78. 78. I, I guess that that was down to the federation because it was more, uh, more difficult and cost-wise. Uh, uh, um, there's never been money in skating. No. And no. so... Uh, it, it has to be self-generated, mm. and with the Australians, they um, they do self-generate well. Yeah. Because they have they they've got setups that they they use. You know they have uh, um, bees that they and and, and uh, car washes and yeah, yeah, things yeah. where they can generate money. And yeah. The, the people will will contribute that way because that's the, the nature of the um, the Australians. They. They would they would give freely to uh, not not freely but I know uh, what you mean is more it, yeah, generously, generously yeah yeah so yeah. you've got that team around you looking at some of the photos I've seen there's quite a big team that you took really it seems to be uh, well yeah it wasn't a, it, um, we so anyway, just we one trained, or two, yeah. yeah we tr we we well, I set up a um, a training program yeah um, because there was there was um, Australia's a big place it's yeah. uh, I think it's um, uh, from memory, Queensland is five times bigger than England, <laughs> and Australia I think is nineteen times bigger than England. Right. But all the cities are all around the coast. Yeah. And um, and in the cities there are there were skaters, and there were skaters that were interested in going abroad. So I did a um, a, a, a training program for them, which I issued to them, asked them to train, and then they they all came to Brisbane um, for a, a selection. Yeah. And we had to we had to base the selection on the individuals at that time, uh, because not 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 knowing the skaters from uh, from yeah, different sure. different areas, yeah. so they were selected on that on their performance in the trials, and um, yeah, we took away four men and three uh, three women, mm -hmm. um, two women. 
I think we could have taken a third woman that was very good, but her husband didn't go, oh. and so there was uh, upset and, and so. Oh. Uh, was it? Was there any of those that stood out for you? Do you think or? Um, there was one very good guy from from um, uh, Adelaide, uh, Craig Moore. Craig Moore, yeah. He 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 yeah. was a um, very dedicated yeah. skater at that time, um, and uh, sports-wise, he was very good. But he he um, he lacked a little bit in self-confidence, uh, I think, and and he he had a couple of falls. Which didn't help him. Right, but he had the. Um, he, he, he he seemed to have the ability if he if he'd studied. Yeah, right. the others were were um, they, uh, the nature of the Australians are is that they they all they will train um, mm. hard for the for their abilities if you like. Well, I mean, I I, I know. I know because I talked to a couple of guys. The in, the internet, the power of the internet is a wonderful thing these days, isn't it? You know, the world's such a small place these days yeah, course, compared yeah. to what it was, yeah. you know, thirty years ago. And uh, I know occasionally I I I, I have a, I get a message from Ron Woods, who I know was in the right. team. Then. Yes. And uh, and he he always always speaks very highly of you. I know he holds. That's holds, nice. Well, he holds That's you in the highest esteem. I can I can't. I know I know he does, and he says that what you did for. Australian skating, you know, he said you, you left a legacy. I know I spoke earlier, but you left a legacy there, certainly with him, and he believes w with Australia that lasted 15 20 years after you left. So, well, I'm surprised to hear that. Well, you know, it's, it's, well, it's, 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 a, it's a nice thing to hear, yeah. It, it's because uh, at the time, um, your dad will, your, your dad will tell you that um, running something of that nature is not always easy because there's always. Um, you, you get more knockers than you get supporters, mm -hmm. so uh, it's not easy to do something. Oh, Ron, Ron, Ron says, he said natural fact says it, it, that you were the. I think he, he said that my dad used to joke that you were the fastest bloke on their team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah. 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 No. The, well, but yeah. They. Um, no, that's that's nice to hear. It mean it mean it does mean that w whatever you did. Did yeah. did did progress them, yeah, uh, uh, sufficiently for them to be able to support you know to race. Well, they're a nation uh, of world champions now, so oh, they? yeah, oh, so yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, yeah. certainly, I mean, I I, I remember um, certainly in the in the late eighties and, and early nineties, yeah. you know, Australia were a real big force. We reckon with really? so you think like late eighties, and it's only ten years since you you took over the mantle of, of taking the team away to. Right. to Argentina so you obviously sown the seeds of something there right. I mean I'm not saying that they wouldn't have ever achieved it but no. it probably probably made them look conscious you know, of, co what they, of what they could achieve and maybe brought it about a lot quicker than maybe they would have done themselves I mean yes. you know there's a nation there that's never set foot in a, uh, yeah. a in a world championships and now they're being coached and mentored by a world yes. champion yeah you know? it does it helps so yeah. of course it does it must help again going yeah. back to the psychological thing it must help yes. them think well actually you know if he's yeah. got belief in us, then, then yeah. we're, we're some way there. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that's it's, not, it's true. It, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, it, it's always beneficial to up and coming skaters to have an experienced person. Yeah. Um, uh, to give them some some benefit of their knowledge. It, yeah. it, it, it's it is the place to get it. Yeah. And it's the place. It, it's uh, it's not always easy to to plant the the information into into people's um, minds or or for them to use it. But it, it you've got to put it out there for them to be able to take it in. Yeah, yeah. yeah cause I think I know my dad gets frustrated sometimes because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of would be coaches if you like that he sees yeah. and when he says coaches really people on the sidelines who've never yeah. put a pair of skates on who've been around the sport for five minutes and suddenly they know how you're going to win a world championships you know yeah. and what you've got to do and how you're going to skate and i know he gets frustrated by that sometimes Absolutely. because you know he feels they're telling yeah. totally the wrong things and especially if it's any of his skaters and i think because it's a small sport it's more susceptible to that i know in a football is, match yeah. you've got 40,000 people who all know better than what the manager does. Yeah, does but yeah. 
they're never close enough to the manager to really go and have any influence or the players. In skating, they are. You can walk up to another skater, you can walk yeah. up to a guy and say, Oh, you know, I think you should have dived a bit now. Oh, I think you should have done this. Such a, yeah. You know, and I know it frustrates the hell out of me. And my dad, like, you know, really. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, it's, it's not an easy sport. It, it's um, as, uh, skating's a, an individual sport because, and it's a hard sport, and it, it, it's not, not easy. To be to to for a sport to to mm -hmm. do because of the, it's the amount of effort that goes into it, and the uh, the rewards from it are not always there. You know, you if you're playing football, it's a team game. It's uh, it, people from the outside understand it, and they can and you can go out there. You can play a good game or you can play a bad game, and it doesn't matter a great deal yeah. because you come off as a team. But yeah. uh, skating is an individual sport. It's a um, it's a sport that is um, is hard to generate public interest in unless yeah. you've got somebody involved out there. Yeah. If you've got somebody involved out on the on, on the track, then it's fine. You, but um, uh, people do not. Um, People outside the sport cannot support the sport because they don't understand the sport and they don't have an interest in the sport because they, there's nobody doing it. Mm -hmm. So um, it, to get people along to watch it and understand it is uh, um, yeah. difficult. So when did you come back from Australia? In 79. And so you've been out there six years? Yeah, six, six years. Yeah, six years. What made you come back? Just a change. Really? Uh, Again. The, Australia was great. Yeah. Uh, I've got no no qualms about Australia, and we still remember it today. Yeah, remember sure. it vividly, and and uh, had a great time. It was good. F we we felt it was good good for our kids. Our kids were young at the time. It's very very beneficial to children out there because everything's done for them. Um, when when I say that, I mean uh, mm. support wise, mm. it, 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 things are done for them. Um, they, they've got a professional approach. For example, um, we had uh, my son used to play for a, a local cricket team, and we had an, uh, um, an Indian test player coaching uh -huh. our junior team. All right. That's that's the uh, and they 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 are paid the the coaching in Australia at that time, which was this was well, I'm talking. Um, uh, Seventy six. Yeah. Coaches were paid to do uh, to to fulfil a, um, a function. Right. And we had this this test guy came, used to come along. These kids are um, nine years old, yeah. and they're being taught by a, a guy who who, yeah, who plays who, test cricket. Test. And Jason, um, my son, was uh, given uh, a trophy for as the Best fielder yeah. by this by a, 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 a spinner that used to play for Queensland. It's really? like being, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, what, yeah. what I'm saying is that the the um, the test players or the or the uh, people that were playing professionally mm -hmm. were available mm -hmm. to teach children uh, at a young age. Which is not necessarily the case in England. I would say that's definitely the Australian mentality isn't it? They're Absolutely. Being to excel and yeah. not just play at it. Yeah. Really, so yeah. that opened my eyes a little bit yeah. for the, the the approach to all, and that was the case right across the board. So no, going back to uh, Australia, no, it, everything was fine. We had a yeah. good we had a good time out there. Yeah. We we toured around Australia, but yeah. when we when we toured, we 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 toured it through Queensland, and then we had, we had the. Uh, um, what they call the V dubs, the, yeah, camp, yeah, the camp camper vans, yeah, yeah. and we went round to Perth and came back from Perth, and and uh, Marina did a degree out there, and, oh, right. and she went to um, uni out there, and while well, the kids were at school, and um, yeah, we we had a good time. But at the end of that, we then said, okay, we've done all that. Um, what do we do now? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we we thought, well, come back. We 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 come back. Yeah. And because uh, um, we we hadn't seen our our, our parents, you right. might, you know you you miss your my parents are getting older, mm -hmm. and um, we we had um, 
brothers and sisters yeah. and people we hadn't seen for six years. So you fulfilled a, a part of your life that you wanted to do by exactly. going to Australia. You've done that six years and you're back. Yeah. Did yeah. you ever think of getting back into the skating when you come back? Well, I, I probably would have done. Uh, uh, Initially, I had to, uh, we're, we're, we're back in England and we've got to set up again. Yeah. Uh, immediately, you've got, to find, you've got to find somewhere for your yeah. family to live and you've got to start living. Um, so what we wanted to do, because we'd seen the, the, um, the happening in Australia, we wanted to build our own house. So yeah. our idea was to buy some land and to, to build our own house. And so that was in the back of our minds coming back. Um, trying to do that in England at that time, you hear a lot about it now. Yeah. You know, lots of people are doing it. You've had lots of programs on TV about it. it um, but at that time, it was a, it was unheard of, mm. unknown. You'd, only only house builders did things like that. Not individuals didn't do it, or very few. Yeah. And uh, um, we wanted to do it, so we we went into that process. So right. now I've got to get the family settled. Now. What happened was it took us a year to find, we bought, we, this is the house we built in, right. we live in now. It took us a year to find any land. We had difficulty finding land. We used to go around knocking on doors. Really? We decided on there, we yeah. wanted to live it down, down in this sort of area. We went there knocking on doors, asking people if they'd sell any land. And um, we had a lot of trouble finding it. We nearly gave up, we, ne we nearly bought out. And then this this came up and we, yeah. we finally bought it. But then we had trouble with planning. We couldn't because we didn't. Have, we 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 thought we were doing the right things, and it turned out we weren't. And we we took us three years to get planning permission. So my mind, uh, obviously, my children were getting yeah, older yeah, at the yeah. time. You know, three years for a yeah, child is a long yeah, time. Yeah, it is. And so we were living in uh, in a place up the road called Hayward Heath. Three, yeah, three years um, uh, renting. While we were while we were trying to build, it took us three years to get planning permission. We had the land for four years. So you got so you was all tied up with that, and so yeah. really from a skating point of view, that weren't really only an option or no, no, that was that was out the window. Yeah. Yeah. At that time, I wasn't. Uh, I needed to do this, and it, it took fifteen months to build this, and it was completed in eighty four. Right now, there was a <laughs> there's a book called nineteen eighty four by um, <laughs> yeah, George Orwell. George Orwell, yeah. What, what's George Orwell's name? What's George Orwell's name? Yeah. Uh, go on. It's Blair. Oh, is it really? And if you notice, oh, right, house, and that's why we're sitting in Blair House. You're right. Didn't know that. Oh, yeah. there you go. His name's Blair. Blair. Yeah. Yeah, George Orwell was, and he wrote 1984, cool. and we and completed 1984. And we've got a big oh, poster yeah. um, that, that Jason bought that's all grey, yeah. and all, you know, all the houses are all lined yeah, up, yeah, like, yeah. like you see in, in the yeah. industrial north, if you like. That's right. You know, they're all lined up, yeah. and they're all grey, black, yeah. and there's this one house that's <laughs> painted red and white, and it says, and they, they the coppers are dragging the guy out of the house and <laughs> taking him off to jail, you know, how dare yeah. you paint your house. <laughs> not great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, fantastic story. Yeah, so that's that's why we're, our, we're, our house is Blair House. So you came back, see, well, so you came back in 79. Yeah, and it took us that five years. It took you five years? To get into here. And I've been around skating all my life. I started in 15 and, and yet I've only seen you twice, three times including today, <laughs> around the skating track. Once at the Europeans in 1980, right. then you leave it 17 years before you have a look again at the at the what's it at the uh, mm. uh, at the the Brighton race yeah, that's down, the road, it was down the road yeah. down the road and I and then I ain't seen you yeah, since. Oh, I did see you at Bobby Alva's 90th. So, yeah. which begs the question: So, how long are we going to have to to wait now before I see you around a, a roller skating track again? Well, I. I I don't know. I'm not in contact with any with anybody. Right. I know. I know your your your, your, uh, your dad runs. Um, yeah. Or he's involved with the roller speed. I know he's involved with all the what's yeah. happening in Birmingham, um, which is very admirable. I don't know any clubs down here. I don't know any skating. Yeah, yeah. Any any skating down well, there here. There aren't really. No, yeah. I don't know of any. And um, would I get involved? Um, I'm. I might. I might get involved if it were, if the um, if the situation was there. A bit of road, yeah. I'd yeah. certainly if there was if there was worlds or anything yeah. close by, I would go and see them and 
and World Championships, I would go and watch them, yes. I would be interested I in I know it. this year, there were European Championships in Holland. Mm. So, uh, but I, I think I think there's a, a Belgium are up for awards or Euros coming up mm. soon. Mm. But, you know, certainly from a... I certainly think that the skate, British skating... Um, I don't think suffered is quite the right word, but it was certainly more in the loss of you not being around for the years. All oh, right. Yeah, well, yeah, I did. <laughs> so, yeah, no, yeah, that's, yeah, but, yeah. You know what I mean? Is it like yeah. you've got a, a world champion? As I said, you're our last world champion, and mm. and I mean it's been far too long. I mean we got Bill Begg, who who the New Zealander. Yeah. Oh, he he always uh, he he always jokes about the years when Brits were Brits, you know, when the Poms were great, you know, and when men were men and all this sort of stuff. And he's, all, <laughs> and he's always saying that, you know, and really, what he's alluding to really is the glory years of, of you know, of uh, of yourself and, and, you know, my dad and my goff and then yeah. a bit later Peter and Malane. But since that era, since that generation, there has been nobody yes. really on a consistent level who yeah. have stepped onto a track and made themselves known. I know when I speak to my dad, he mm. said it, he was it was never it was never a hope that they went on and did okay. It was an expectation, and mm. I feel from talking to you today that like that's the sort of philosophy that you went into racing with. You expected to do well. Mm. It was the, the disappointment was when you didn't. It wasn't it wasn't when I did well. Wow, that was good. The expectation was that you would. Mm. And and it's a diff. I think it's a different mentality we have now to what we had then. And you know, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that yeah, but that comes from that comes from schooling. It from is training. And it, it it does, yeah. and it's unfortunate that in today's in today's uh, age within British skating, we don't have the people no. who have been and done it, who have been European world champions, mm. world medalists. Other than a very very select few, who have, who have you know, I mean, Mickey McGough, um, you know, he when he 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 only skates up in the early eighties. He then you know went into it and did a bit of coaching and did a bit of management and you know went on the roller speed, you know, and and it doesn't. I, I never see Mickey from from this day, uh, you know, from, you know, for, I haven't seen Mick now for for quite a few years really, um, and there aren't those sort of people around who who. Mm who can give that to the youngsters other than yeah. a very, very select few and it is and, and that's dwindling so I am sure without a shadow of a doubt that walk around any track and you'd be warmly welcomed certainly by you know yeah. by people. But yeah. um well yeah. John Folly, ten thousand meter nineteen sixty nine world champion. It's been an absolute honour and a pleasure chatting <laughs> here today. And uh, thank JJ you, JJ Junior. JJ thank Junior. You. Well, uh, trust me, there's a lot of us. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm really, uh, I'm really pleased and really grateful that you, yeah. you took time out to, to talk to me today. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I haven't. Thank my memory's you. not that good for a, a, a lot of the things. Trust me, your memory's fantastic. Doesn't matter how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. I appreciate it. No worries.